Welcome back, everyone. Does your math homework have you crying in the corner again? <laughs> I don't want to do my homework. <laughs> well, dry your eyes, clean up your makeup, and let's get ready because simple. fine fractions is simple. Hi, I'm Curtis, and today we are going to simplify or reduce fractions. We got two terms that are going to help us along the way. One, greatest common factor, also known as the GCF. The other term we're going to want to know is equivalent fractions. Mr. Mangledorf, can you help us? Okay, so the greatest common factor we want to know what that is, right? It's also called the GCF. But first we need to review what a factor is. A factor is a number that we can use to multiply together to get another number. So if we have the number 6, two factors of 6 would be 3 and 2. Because 3 times 2 makes 6. Does that make sense? Let's go ahead and look at a couple of examples. So when dealing with the greatest common factor, we're trying to find a common factor, which means we're using two numbers. So we want to look at two numbers to find all of the factors before we can find what they have in common. So let's look at the um, numbers 4 and 8 and see what we can find. All right, let's go. So here's the number 4, right? The easiest way to find the first factors of 4 are to think about it. What makes 4 when we multiply two numbers together? We can always start with 1 because 1 times 4 equals 4. We always know that 1 is a factor. What other two numbers can we multiply together to make 4? That's right. 2 and 2. So there we go. We have the factors of 4. 1, 4, and 2. So, what are the factors of 8? So let's start again. We have 1 and 8. Easy enough. Another factor is 2 times 4. So 2 and 4. Are there any other ways to make the number 8? I don't think so. So the factors of 8 are 1, 8, 2, and 4. So if we look at these two sets of numbers and we say, what do they have in common? Well, they both have 1's in common. They both have 2's in common. And they both have 4. Since we're looking for the greatest common factor, it's going to be 4. So how does the GCF help us simplify or reduce fractions? Well, since we just found the GCF of 4 and 8, and we know that it's 4, so the greatest common factor of 4 and 8 is 4. In order to reduce a fraction like 4 over 8, we want to divide the top and the bottom number by their greatest common factor. So let's go ahead and do this real quick, and we'll do some more examples in a minute. So I'm going to go ahead and divide the top and the bottom by 4, the greatest common factor. 4 divided by 4 is 1, and 8 divided by 4 is 2. So in simplest form, or reduced, 4 over 8 is the same as 1 half. And we can always think about it to make sure that makes sense, right? 4 out of 8 is exactly half. So it makes sense that in simplest form we could write it as 1 over 2. Okay, that brings us to our next term, equivalent fractions. It really kind of looks like the word equal, equal fractions. We just determined that if we take the fraction 4 over 8, in order to reduce it, we divide by the greatest common factor of 4, 
and we get 1 over 2. 4 divided by 4 is 1, 8 divided by 4 is 2. 1 half is an equivalent fraction to 4 over 8. When dealing with fractions, we can divide or multiply the top and bottom numbers by the same number and the result will be an equivalent fraction. What if we took 4 over 8 and multiplied by 2? We would get a bigger equivalent fraction. 4 times 2 is 8 and 8 times 2 is 16. 8 over 16, which is equal to 1 over 2. They're all equivalent fractions. Just remember, when dealing with fractions, you can divide or multiply as long as whatever you do to the top, you do it to the bottom. We have to use the same number and we'll get an equivalent fraction. Hi, it's me, Curtis, with three easy steps to simplify fractions. One, we are going to find the factors of the top and bottom numbers. Step two, we're going to identify the GCF or greatest common factor. Step three, we are going to divide the top and bottom numbers by the GCF. Real simple. Today I wanted to share with you three of my favorite fractions to reduce. The first one is 3 over 9. So the first step is to find the factors of the top and bottom number. So if I find the factors of 3, they are just 1 times 3. That is the only way to make a 3 by multiplication. As for 9, I know that 1 times 9 will give me a 9. I also know that 3 times 3 will give me a 9. So, if I try to identify the greatest common factor, it's going to be a 3. Because they both share a 1 and they both share a 3. And the greatest one is 3. Now I need to divide both the top and the bottom by my GCF. 3 over 9, and I'm going to divide the top and the bottom by 3. 3 divided by 3 is 1. 9 divided by 3 is 3. So, in simplest form, 3 over 9 is 1 over 3. The next fraction that I want to reduce is 10 over 25. So, let's find the factors. For 10, it is 1 and 10. The other factors are 2 and 5. Because 2 times 5 makes 10. All for 25, 1 times 25. Let's see here, how else can we make, oh yeah, 5 and 5. 5 times 5 also makes a 25. And this is good because now I have a GCF. It is going to be 5. It is the greatest thing they have in common. So now I will divide both the top and the bottom by the number 5. 10 divided by 5 is 2. 25 divided by 5 is 5. So in simplest form, 10 over 25 is actually 2 fifths. The last example is going to be 4 over 16. So, finding the factors of 4, I know that 1 times 4. I also know that 2 times 2 will give me a 4. 
So those are the factors of 4. As for 16, it's going to be 1 times 16. We also have 2 times 8. And we're going to have a few more factors. I think that we have 4 times 4. And those are the factors of 16. Now, as the greatest number, I see 4 as their greatest common factor. So, I will divide the top and the bottom by the number 4. 4 divided by 4 is 1. And 16 divided by 4 is going to be 4. So, in simplest form, 4 over 16 is actually just 1 fourth. Now that we have the easy ones down, let's take a look at some bigger numbers and see exactly what happens. What about 12 over 60? How can I reduce that? Well, let's follow our steps, right? We have three steps. The first step is finding all of the factors. So for 12, I know that 1 in 12, 2 in 6, And 3 and 4, those are all factors of the number 12. Looking at 60, it's probably going to have a few more factors. So, let's start with 1 and 60. We also know that 2 times 30. What about, hmm, 4 times 15? Oh, I forgot one. 3 times 20. And how about 5 times 12? Alrighty. So, let's see if we can find the greatest common factor. Easy. It's 12. So, I can divide both the top and the bottom by 12. Twelve divided by twelve is one. Sixty divided by twelve is five. It really helps if you know your multiplication tables. It makes this a lot faster. As we just saw with the number 60, sometimes when we have bigger numbers, it's hard to find all of the factors. So what happens if we need to reduce something like 40 over 200? Finding all of the factors might be difficult. Curtis, do you want to try this one? Dang, them numbers are huge. I'm going to let you get this one. Besides, I'm kind of hungry. Okay, so 40 over 200, right? Instead of finding all the factors, I'm just going to go ahead and divide by a number that I know will result in the even number for both of them. So let's go ahead and divide by like, I don't know, 2. And we'll hit equivalent fractions along the way, and then we can end up with the simplest form of this fraction. So if I divide both the top and the bottom by the number 2, I'm going to get 40 divided by 2 is 20 over 100. So I'm already headed in the right direction. And 20 over 100 is an equivalent fraction to 40 over 200. So let's take 20 over 100 and reduce it again. This time I'm going to divide by, I don't know, 10. Right? 10 goes into both 20 and 100. So if I divide by 10, and remember, if we do it to the top, we need to do it to the bottom. 20 divided by 10 is 2. 100 divided by 10 is 10. 
another equivalent fraction. And I'm getting pretty close now. But now I can see that these are both still even numbers, so we know we can divide by 2 again. Jeez, man. It's taking forever. You want some chicken? No. Fine. Yes, I'll say you so. Yes. Okay, where were we? We were going to divide the 2 over 10, dividing the top and the bottom by a common factor of 2. 2 divided by 2 is 1, and 10 divided by 2 is 5. And there we have it. We've now reduced 40 over 200 to 1 fifth. We use equivalent fractions along the way, like 2 over 10 and 20 over 100. Easy enough. Easy enough. Easy enough. <laughs>